Okay, great. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Ya. I lead experimentation at LinkedIn. Um, so before I get started, I just wanted to mention that experimentation and A-B testing has been playing a very important role um, at LinkedIn. And the work that I'm going to present today uh, is actually contributed from many who is working in this area. And in particular, those uh, that I face piled over here. So I don't think I need to uh, give more introduction on what A-B testing is, especially after Ronnie's uh, in, uh, keynote talk yesterday, right? But just so that we are all in the mood for A-B testing, uh, I'm gonna just talk, kinda walk through a very simple scenario. I have uh, on the LinkedIn uh, registration page, I have a yellow button on the page, I don't think is driving enough clicks, right? So how about a green button instead, right? So what I do is I would actually start to split traffic and have part of my traffic to continue to see the yellow button and some traffic actually going to see the new green button instead. And of course, end of the day, I'll have data that's collected in both buckets and I'm going to compare them and lay the real users to actually tell me which one they prefer better. Right, so at LinkedIn, uh, we A-B testing a lot. And obviously, we use A-B test to evaluate new ideas, right? Whether it's uh, a redesign of our homepage, or it's uh, relevance algorithms, or it's new, new product lines that we're considering, right? But in addition to that, we also use A-B testing to do a lot of uh, bad backend changes, to test any backend changes as well, right? Platform changes and uh, code refactoring and bug fixes as well, right? So we encourage our engineers, uh, whenever they do a, they write a unit test or integration test, always think about A-B testing as sort of the final exit criteria, right? So uh, the way that we uh, try to inspire people to do is really to actually uh, test everything. And this is sort of the, the mentality, the philosophy that we have at LinkedIn going forward as well. Okay, so uh, just to uh, sort of share a couple of examples uh, that uh, how uh, LinkedIn really has benefited um, from A-B testing uh, from the culture that we have. Um, so uh, here I'm sharing uh, this one example uh, of an experiment that we ran. And of course, I assume that everybody in this audience has used LinkedIn before. So uh, you know that on your LinkedIn profile, uh, we actually sometimes show you a little module where uh, we say, hey, you know, why don't you tell us about um, you know, something about you, right? So we can actually help you complete your profile. And this is one particular one that we say, hey, tell us what causes do you care about? Right, so we showed this module before, um, but during the experiment, what we did is we actually also have this one line of text that is actually telling you why you should be doing this, right? So by telling our user why, we actually were able to increase the aided rate on this module by 14%, right, which is really substantial. Another example, um, so uh, is that we actually redesigned our payment flows for our premium members, right? So you can be a premium a LinkedIn member uh, signing up to be a job seeker or, or you know, some of those uh, sales solutions that we have uh, for you, right? So we redesigned our payment um, flow entirely. And that redesign uh, that we were able to actually measure through A-B test, that it was actually reducing uh, the cancellation um, by 30%, increased 10% on the free trial uh, uh, orders, and of course made LinkedIn uh, millions of dollars, right? So you can see really A-B testing is credited for uh, improving not just our, uh, you know, our business, but also our user experience as well. Okay, so in the past year, uh, our experimentation at LinkedIn actually has grown a lot, right? So the data that I'm showing here is from June 1st last year to June 1st this year. So our experimentation usage has been more than doubled, right? And the total number of experiments that we ran on uh, LinkedIn uh, over this one year was 4,667, right? So tremendously a lot, right? And then every single day, our platform is processing over 10 terabytes of data and generating uh, over 1,000 of metrics uh, every single day for every single experiments that we analyze. 
Okay, so um, at LinkedIn, uh, the way that we uh, think about A-B testing is really through this uh, three-step process, right? So there is the design, deploy, and analyze, right? So when you're designing experiments, thinking about what you are experimenting on and who you want to be uh, experimenting on as well, right? So during the deploy phase, we have this sort of the service layer and also the application layer that, uh, that uh, come together. And then, of course, during, uh, you, you know, you, you, you don't need to run A-B test unless you analyze it, right? So, so we, we also provide a lot of analytical uh, tools for you to drill uh, into this matrix and then deep dive into try to come up with insights why uh, the matrix move the way they do. So, um, so of course, you know, we, when we are uh, designing and building our A-B testing platform, uh, which is the platform that's called the Excellent, and of course not just because it's actually an excellent platform, but you know, there are story behind it as well. So we, uh, the platform has these three components that's actually also uh, related to the, the three steps in the, in the A-B process as well, right? So we have this one component that's looking at experimental design and management and online infrastructure and also, of course, the last component, which is the, the offline uh, analysis as well. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm not going to actually talk uh, much about the infrastructure uh, in detail, and I encourage you to all read our papers um, to, for, for the details you, that you, you may find interesting. Um, so what I'm going to do next is actually going to uh, focus a little bit more uh, on, uh, on the challenges that we see both uh, in the infrastructure side and also uh, in analytic uh, side as well that is more kind of relevant uh, to the fact that LinkedIn is a uh, member-based uh, social network, right? So I'm going to go through four challenges um, in the next few slides. Um, so so the, the first one that I want to say um, is, is the fact that LinkedIn, um, uh, when, you, when a lot of people are thinking about LinkedIn, you're thinking about, hey, it's a social network about, about member, right, about people. Uh, but it's actually more than just that, right? So LinkedIn actually uh, offers a, a very diverse uh, array of products, and then we actually also have, um, uh, in addition to members, we also have uh, what we call guests. Uh, those are the users who uh, don't have our account with us, but they're just visiting, right? They, they're browsing uh, in, in, in our web. And we also have uh, companies, uh, company profiles, right? We have company, we also have jobs and groups, right? These are all entities uh, in this social network. And when you're thinking about A-B testing, a lot of times people are not just thinking about optimizing experience for our members, but how about experience for our guests, right? Like the example that I mentioned earlier, we wanted to increase the sign up rate, right? So, and, and how about the jobs, right? Like how about running experiments on companies uh, and, and, and schools, right? All these other entities that's out there in, in this whole uh, social network that we have. And so, uh, so it's challenging, you know, to build a platform that is actually able to do this uh, all at the same time uh, seamlessly, right, with this one workflow that works for any new entities uh, that people identify uh, in this process. Um, but I'm going to share this uh, one example that is actually um, uh, even, I think, more challenging, uh, which is really the fact that we, we have, uh, you know, entities actually can transition between the two states, right? So, um, so I have this one experiment uh, that is actually try to encourage our, uh, our guests, users, uh, to actually sign up with their Facebook account, right? So the purpose of that is, is really because, you know, if you link your LinkedIn account with your Facebook account, of course, we have some more information about the user. So we're actually able to autofill a lot of information during this onboarding process for you. So, um, so of course, the hope is that by having this you know, onboarding process easier, then people are, are going to complete their profiles more, they're gonna start to be more engaged uh, uh, with LinkedIn, and then they're gonna be benefiting more from all these, you know, wonderful products that we offer them, right? So, um, so the challenge with that is the fact that we, the experiment actually is running uh, on users uh, when they are guests, right? So they didn't have their account with LinkedIn. And then of course, end of, after the experiment, you know, the hope is that they're gonna be members, right? So experiment starts, uh, with guests and and with uh, our members, right? Um, and then, uh, of course, when we do experimentation, when we randomize, we actually randomize based on uh, uh, the cookie, right, the browser ID, which is the, the unique identifier that we have uh, on the, uh, before we have uh, the member IDs, right? But however, we actually wanted to be able to measure um, uh, them both as guests and as member, right? Because uh, a simple example would be, um, okay, I wanted to measure them as guests because I want to see, you know, 
by doing this, am I actually driving up sign up rates, right? But to measure them as members, because you know, after they become member, you know, because we make uh, you know this onboarding process so much easier for them, are they completing their profiles more often, right? Are they enjoying other benefits, uh, other products uh, at LinkedIn as well, right? So how are we able to actually do this uh, seamlessly together, being able to run experiment in one unit and actually measure them in both, right? Um, uh, one thing I didn't mention uh, is a big, due to interest of time, I'm actually just gonna uh, give you enough hooks to make you interested in reading our paper. So I'm actually not gonna tell you how we address these challenges. I'm just gonna share the, the challenges with you uh, in the talk here. Um, okay, so the, uh, the second challenge um, is the fact that um, our users, um, they, in the social network, they actually have not just one role, they actually uh, have two roles, right? And thinking about uh, in the example of endorsement, right? So you can be uh, the person who endorses somebody else, but also you can be the one who gets endorsed, right? Similarly, you know, when you are viewing somebody else's profile, you are the viewer, the people who you're viewing profile of, uh, they are the viewee, right? And email as the uh, same, right? You can send somebody an email, you can also receive an email from somebody in your network, right? So everybody is having these two roles uh, when, they, when they are in a social network by somebody performing an action, also at the same time, somebody who is receiving an action as well, right? So how does that make our experimentation more challenging? So, um, so here I'm sharing, uh, again, uh, this one interesting experiment that we ran. Um, that is actually really try to um, make our profile uh, richer, right? So by, by having a customized uh, you know, background image uh, on the profile. And the hope, of course, uh, is you know, by, by including a customized background image, you can actually um, encourage people to actually start to view more profiles because profiles are becoming more interesting. And of course, for those members who included a profile uh, background image, um, they can start to receive more profile views as well, right? So this kind of value proposition from both angles. So um, we, and of course, you know, thinking about these two hypotheses, then the naturally translates to into these uh, two um, experiments. Uh, the first experiment is on VUE, right? So they are, we are doing a VUE experiment that is essentially enabling um, people to be able to upload um, a, a profile back on image, right? So we also have a viewer experiment that is try to enable people to be able to view uh, a, a profile, the background image, if, they're, if somebody has a background image, right? So, um, of course, uh, the challenge is the fact that the, you cannot just run them uh, entirely orthogonal to each other. And the, the same user actually has to be uh, eligible to both, right? You cannot say, hey, uh, guess what? You can upload a, a, a background image, and, but you cannot see them, <laughs> right? So, so the same user actually has to be enabled uh, for both experiments, um, which means these two experiments actually has to be fully aligned, right? Um, and on the other hand, uh, this is actually subtle, but it's actually quite important, um, is the fact that you know, when you're running experiment, the goal, of course, is when you're running experiment at, uh, at either 10%, 20%, 50%, what you learned, uh, what you measured during this experiment time period is actually able to um, be representative enough for you to say, if I launch to 100% to all users, this is what I'm going to see, right? But this is not really the case in this experiment setting, right? Thinking about the following thing. If you are uh, the uh, a person in the social network and you try to, you, you're viewing um, people's profiles, and then um, if only 1%, of our user actually has a background image enabled, right? That is not really going to change your behavior dramatically at all, right? You're not going to say, hey, you know, guess what? I'm just gonna go to LinkedIn and start to see uh, people's profile more because you know, this one, I'm just gonna happen to run into this one person user who has an interesting um, background image, right? So, which really means the, the percentage that you run your experiment at and, and it's going to matter to uh, uh, the, the final measurement that you, you, you measure for the profile view improvements that you, you wanted to measure, right? 
So of course you say, okay, the best thing you can do is why don't I run uh, a 99% experiment, right? So I have my treatment and I give 99% of our users this capability of uploading and viewing experiment of, of this background image and there's only 1% uh, who doesn't have this capability. Uh, but of course you run into the situation where uh, you, you have a much larger variance uh, uh, you know, compare with if you were running your experiment at 50-50%, right? So it's, it's really sort of a learning uh, using this whole process as you ramping up your experiment. Okay, so um, the third aspect uh, is about offline experiments. So I think a lot of the experiments, uh, uh, I think Ronnie and several others who mentioned about A-B testing a lot of times, uh, was referring to what I would call uh, sort of this online experiments. Uh, and this is in contrast with offline experiments, thinking about offline experiments as you were sending emails out, right? So um, online experiments, your, your experimental population uh, is really uh, whoever come and visit you, right? So either you are LinkedIn, you are Bing, or you are, you are Google. Uh, it's just uh, active users, right? People who come and visit you, right? And then what you try to measure is really users' activities. Right, either it's the total number of page views uh, or the total number of clicks, right, it's people's activities. Um, whereas in this offline experiment setting, uh, you, you actually uh, can decide who you wanted to experiment on, right? So this is maybe uh, compared more with a traditional uh, uh, experiment, A-B experiment that we see maybe in clinical trials, et cetera, right? It's the experimenter decides who they wanted to send emails to. And the population doesn't have to be only active users, right? I can actually send emails, and this is what we do sometimes as well, is to send emails to what we call dormant users, right? Try to encourage them to come back and visit us more often. Right, so and when it comes to measurement, you not only just wanted to measure activity, you also wanted to include the in activities in part of your measurement as well, right? So I'm gonna go through uh, one example uh, a little bit deeper. And so there's actually, uh, in our paper, we, we consider these three scenarios of offline experiments that we run at LinkedIn. There's email experiments. There's also the second category, which is what I'm going to go a little bit deeper is uh, we have an online experiment, but it's, we are coupling it with sort of this offline email campaign, right? Okay, so, um, so we have this uh, awesome page. Uh, it's called Who Viewed My Profile? And uh, you can go and you can actually, get, it tells you, uh, you know, uh, in the history, uh, recent history, how many people have viewed your profiles, right? So um, not, long time, not, not too long ago, we actually revamped uh, this page, which makes you know makes makes it better, right? Um, uh, so um, so of course uh, our product teams wants to run uh, a online A/B test uh, to see when they when users actually come into this uh, new who view of my profile page, are they engaging with our product more? But at the same time, the marketing team they also wanted to create a buzz around this new launch, right? So what they wanted to do is they wanted to send, uh, start an email campaign. This is actually very often that happens across, uh, across our company. Uh, it's to that you can get more people to know about this new feature, right? So it's really about discoverability. Of course, uh, the challenge is that uh, you cannot uh, send emails to people who don't have this feature, right? So you can only send email to people who are in the treatment bucket, who is eligible uh, for to see uh, the new feature during this online uh, A-B experiment. Um, but the problem is if you only send emails to, uh, to the people in treatment, you are going to be bringing people who, are, who were not going to come and visit LinkedIn, now they're coming to visit us, right? And this is a bit different user population, and most likely than not, these are the population who are less engaging compared to the population who normally come and visit us. Right. So uh, just to kind of show you uh, uh, this, right? So what I'm plotting here is uh, during this experiment time period, um, I have this number of users that I'm expecting to see uh, in the treatment, right? And of course, you know, you can see the experiment ran, 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 and all of a sudden during these two days, we ran an email campaign and then boom, we have a lot more users uh, in the treatment bucket than we anticipated. Right, and of course, you know this. I'm not showing the, the numbers here, but this this change actually um, um, made our, our numbers look really bad, right? Because these users are less engaging. You all of a sudden added so many more users who are less engaging uh, to our product. Okay, um, so. Um, uh, I don't have too much time, I know that I'm running out, right? So what I'm going to uh, go through uh, 
is the, the last challenges, which is really uh, what we call network A-B testing, right? So when we are run A-B test, uh, you can think it as we actually try to uh, uh, sort of thinking, uh, measure these two parallel universes, right? So if I could actually give all my users uh, control in one universe and then all my users uh, in uh, treatment uh, that is in a different universe, that'll be ideal, right? I can take these differences and I can tell me, hey, you know, my treatment is actually much better than my control. But that's not reality, right? Reality is the fact that we actually um, can only do a sample part of a users put them in treatment and part of them uh, in control. And of course, the hope is that you know whatever we measure in this reality is going to reflect uh, the the ground truth, right? Which is the y bar zero. What we measure in our sample is actually going to be the same as what we try to learn from our population. Um, and the, the interesting thing is, uh, you know what, because we are social network, this doesn't always hold, right? Because there is going to be interference interactions between the, the members in the social network that, uh, that's gonna bias our experiment results. Um, so just so that everybody uh, believes me, and I'm gonna just kind of talk, walk you through this one example where we run experiment, uh, try to optimize the feed uh, ranking algorithms uh, on our feed, right? So imagine that treatment actually has this great uh, algorithm uh, and it's actually ranking more relevant items much better on the top of the page, right? So you have this one person, Adam, who is in treatment, uh, he clicks on a feed, and then all of a sudden, you know, of course, that feed is going to show up higher position in uh, Adam's social network, which happened, you know, his friend Ben happens to see that uh, item and then uh, click on it. And then, of course, that click is going to be contributed to the control bucket instead, right? So you can see that that information is already leaked uh, in, in, uh, in, into control from treatment. Okay, so... Uh, um, I'm not, I have this one more session, I just uh, want to mention it, I'm not going to go through the slides, uh, which is essentially, uh, I've go, gone through sort of the infrastructure and sort of this analytical challenges that we've seen, uh, but I think one thing, uh, as sort of Rani mentioned yesterday as well, is uh, running every test, uh, the cultural challenges is actually, uh, uh, you know, the, the hardest uh, component. And then in our paper, we actually identified a few things that we did through our platform that is actually really helpful uh, changing our culture uh, by by making, you know, kind of building this experimentation ecosystem uh, f with different components in, in the whole party. Um, so anyway, with that, I'm gonna stop since I run out of time. Thank you. <laughs>